everybody, good evening, welcome to That's Football. Sorry I'm a bit late, but I've been stuck in traffic, I've been static on the M1, I was a little bit late, but we're live now. I hope you're all doing fantastically well. We've not missed the goal, which is always the main thing, and we're here to watch Barcelona play PSG in Paris. Uh, that's what we're watching. We'll keep an eye on Dortmund versus Atletico Madrid, but we've definitely picked the right game tonight. None of this double watch-along shit. We're actually going to focus on PSG against Barcelona. And what is a very interesting side of the draw, if we're being completely honest? What will happen on this side? One of these teams is going to make it to the final. Of course, PSG, Barcelona, Atletico Madrid or Dortmund will play in the final. On what many people say is the weaker side of the draw, I agree. I agree. But more importantly, you know, who, 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 who could do it? That's the thing. Um, Atletico Madrid are playing against Dortmund. It's nil-nil there as well. Um, let me just uh, get this timer sorted because as much as I would love to say that, that's actually not that far wrong. It's only about three seconds. But you know what? We want accuracy. We want accuracy here. I'm going to sync you in perfectly with me. Oh, I'll tell you what. I've been looking forward to this stream all day. I didn't even think I was going to make it at one point. Um, so I'm very excited to be here with you. Been up to Leeds today. Leeds is not a bad city, you know. It might have Leeds United in it. But um, as a city centre, I think Leeds is all right. So if you're from Leeds, thumbs up. Um, it always, I've only ever been there in the rain. But um, I did enjoy it. Thank you for having me, Leeds. There we go. Um, <clears throat> let's get these teams going around the screen for you as well. Stats Carousel, sponsored by OneFootball. Make sure you download it for free. Link's in the video description. Um, really appreciate that. Get all your latest breaking football news, transfer news, etc., etc. There. Um, just good to be watching a game of football. You know? What a game, what a night of football we had last night. It was incredible. It was absolutely fantastic. Uh, there is some championship games going on as well. Middlesbrough beating Hull 1-0 at the moment, if you care about that. But as you can see, that's the Barcelona team for you. Uh, we'll start with that for Ter Stuggan, Koundé, Araujo, Cabasi, Cancelo, Roberto, De Jong, Gundogan, Yamal, Lewandowski and Rafina. Keep an eye out for number 27, Yamal. This is the player this chat never shut up about. So uh, keep an eye on him. Uh, I think, I was talking about this, I will confirm this for you in a moment, I think he is the most valuable player under 23 at, at the moment in the world, um, in the last six months. Um, there was, a, I'm sure there's something went out from the CIES uh, Observatory today, which is like a statistical uh, forum, which is pretty good. Um, in relation to PSG, good players, Donnarumma, Marquinhos, Hernandez, Veraldo, Mendes, uh, Lee Kang In, Ventina, Ruiz, Dembele, Asensio, Asensio and Mbappe. I mean, look at their bench. Agate, Ramos, uh, Mouani, Danilo, Soler, Zer Emery, Skriniar. I mean, they've got some fantastic players. Fantastic players, PSG. Um, the perennial underachievers, though, aren't they? We've got a goal for Atletico Madrid, by the way. It's 1-0. Goals and... Um, I'm just turning it on now. Yeah, they have given it. Yeah, they're 1-0 up already. Have you been to Bradford? If so, what are your thoughts as Move Maniac? I don't think I've been to Bradford, no. Terrible start for Atletico Madrid. Uh, terrible start for Dortmund here. They're making mistakes all over the place. Hummels has just conceded a corner for no reason. Um, yeah, I have been to Doncaster, Luke. Uh, many years ago, I went to Doncaster. Um... It seemed to take us about a bloody hour to get there, but it was worth it when we got there because their swimming pool had an outside bit. It was bloody massive. Um, and that would have been 30 years ago. An outside swimming pool section in Doncaster. Um... Mark is like Manuel from Faulty Towers. One minute he's on the, he's on the US, the next he's over on That's Football. Mark, have you lost weight, says Sir David, Sir Gareth Southgate? I probably have lost a bit of weight, actually. I've cut out bread. I've cut out bread. I probably lost a little bit too much weight, actually. I need to 
What's good for putting on a bit of bit of weight that's not carborific? Yamal Organacho, that's what I was going to talk to you about. Right, okay, this is really interesting. I was talking about this on the United Stand earlier, but it's more for you lot. Nothing against the United Stand community, I'm part of it. But I think you lot, I was very impressed last night with the whole either-or conversations we were having and the Robin, Ro Robin, Rob Ribbery thing was right up my street. A little bit of history. I like those sort of conversations every now and again. But um, what, what really impressed me the most was that... Um, you know, you do like a bit of a good, like a, like a good bit of a debate. And um, basically, the CIES Football Observatory, which is very good on their stats, has uh, put an article out today presenting the world's top 100 players who have not yet turned 23 and whose transfer value has increased the most over the last six months. So it's basically under 23s who've seen the biggest increase in their value over the last six months. Well, 16-year-old prod prodigy, Yamal, who was playing tonight for uh, PSG, he's had the biggest price increase in the last six months. Um, second is João Neves. Third is Marrera of Girona. Cole Palmer is fourth. Hato at Ajax is fifth. Uh, Felipe at Palmeiras is... Uh, well, Hendrik, sorry, um, is um, sixth. Doku, seventh. Menu eighth. João Pedro at Brighton, 9th. Zaire Emery, 10th. Nicholas Jackson, 11th. This is where they've gone wrong. Ganacho, 12th. Trubin of Benfica, 13th. Verts, 14th. Hoyland, 15th. So Man United have got three in the top five, 15. But Yamal is considered the most, uh, the biggest price increase um, in the last six months. So in your answer about Yamal or Ganacho, um, then I would say it has to be a mal based on what people think at the moment. But I think this is going to be... A, which way do you think this is going to go tonight? Um, Barcelona are not what they once were. But in your mal, not in your mouth, in your mal, have they found something new? Um, what's your opinions on the Luke Bennett leak, says Mark Goldbridge? I don't know what that leak is, so I don't know. I like your outfit. I'd describe it as rebellious priest who sneaked out from the vicarage for a pint with his mates, says Nick P. It's not a priest. It's a, it's a shirt. And I had a tie on today, but um, I just haven't had a chance to get changed. Uh, potatoes, protein, nuts, olives, dairy cheese, says Nelly. Thank you very much. Mbappe's on the break here. Two players on him. He'll shoot. Good block. Up against his compatriot, Kundi, at right back tonight. Here's Dembele. I really like Dembele. I've always liked Dembele. Um, thank you, Sean. Please do subscribe to the channel, by the way. I've not been to a funeral, Joseph. No. Um, Justin says, Yamal is clear of Ganacho. He's only 16 years old. He was only 16 years old. Um... And uh, how good do you think he can be? I, I've, I'll be honest, I've not seen lots of him. I haven't seen lots of him. Um, he's um, 17 in July, so it's not like he's only just 16. But um, will he be playing in the Euros for Spain? I don't know. I don't follow La Liga football enough to tell you. Anthony Taylor is the referee here. Thing about Barcelona is, here's a good question. The attraction to this game for me tonight was that it's Champions League night and it's the best of a bad bunch. But honestly, the real attraction was PSG and Barcelona for rightly or wrongly, for the last decade, would be considered big teams in the Champions League. Um, what's gone wrong? And how do they fix it? Because I look at that Barcelona side and I look at the PSG side and I don't see many problems. As I said, you can learn a lot from benches, Navas, Agate, Ramos, Delino, Danilo, Moani. Soler, Zaire Emery, Skriniar. They're all on the bench. 
for PSG. You could put them in an Italian side and you'd say it's a bloody good team. So why are PSG struggling so much at the moment? And also Barcelona, you know, look at their bench. Pedri, Torres, João Felix, um, you know, even, all right, they might be well-travelled, but Christensen, Alonso, Ramal, they've got, they've got good benches and they've got good players. I mean, Gundogan, De Jong, people talking about Yamal, but you've got Rafina, you've got Lewandowski, Arahu, Conde, Cancelo. You know, what, what, what's the problem with Barcelona? What's the problem with PSG? They, they literally have got teams that if they were in good form, you'd be saying they could win this Champions League, but nobody's giving them a shout. No one's giving them a shout. Uh, all he sees bad coaches. Well, Enrique is, hold on, here's Mbappe up against Kundi. If it was Jason Kundi, he'd be laughing, but it's uh, it's Jules Kundi. Yeah, but ne nobody fancies them. Um, bad coaching again, says Tariq. Either or, Mario Gomez or closer. It's got to be closer, Tanishk. Uh, Bran hasn't slept in two days. Is that on purpose or not? I find if I don't sleep for two days, I've done it a couple of times, my brain starts to hallucinate and I start to dribble. It's not a good look. Mark, so how does Anthony Taylor ref these games in relation to how he refs in the Premier League? How does he call a foul or a handball now, says Dino? I think they tend to do it like they do in their own country, yeah. He'll have a, he'll have a, a British VAR. So, yeah, it should, it should be ref like a Premier League game. That's the theory. Zemish says all these players are overrated. Potter did turn down Ajax silence. Yeah, what a prat. I've been tr I've been I've been driving for six hours today, so I feel a bit. Uh, I don't know. I don't. Know. I wouldn't say tired. I just feel a bit. Ooh, you can take it out of it. You can take it out of you. Do you come from a land down under? That's a foul on Lewandowski. Uh, either or, says PSN, either or, hold on a minute, here's Mbappe again, he's had plenty of the ball, edge of the box, too many touches, too many touches, either or Paul, Poyol or PK, Poyol, says PSN, well I will run that, I will run that, if you've got any better either ors, by all means throw them in. I fancy PSG to win the Champions League low key, says Nathan Stewart. Uh, they're too technical and demanding coaches, though, says Juan. Dara says Mbappe's overrated. There, I've said it. Here's Dembele into the box. PSG, obviously the home team here. Oh, he had a chance to get through there, and he did get through, but it's a good block. Yeah, I mean, obviously, oh, good skill here. Good tackle.
Oh, side netting shot there from Rafina. He's been a bit of a flop, hasn't he? I think it's always funny. We're quite arrogant in the Premier League in relation to players that um, do well. No, let me get this right. So we're quite arrogant if a player like Havertz does well in the Bundesliga and then doesn't do so well in the Premier League. We're quite arrogant about they can't cut it in the Premier League. What about when it doesn't work the other way? Rafina was cutting it in the Premier League. Has he really cut it at Barcelona? Voyo says he's been good. With Allegri most likely leaving Juve in the summer, if you're De Zerbi, do you pick... Goal! No, wasn't over the line. I thought it was in for Barcelona. Side netting that time. Well, it obviously wasn't going to... It wasn't a goal because they've got goal line technology, but I thought it was going to go over the line. It was a corner came in and I thought it was going to go over the line, but it wasn't. It's not over the line. It's not over the line. <clears throat> Well, Coutinho definitely didn't do well. Would the Madrid team last night be the best team in the world with Mbappe, says Sullivan Strong? Too simplistic. It's too simplistic to say that. Putting a good player in your team doesn't necessarily make you the best team in the world. I think he's the best player in the world. Two non-strikers. <coughs> Nelly says, two non-strikers from each team. Would you take Would, would you take at United? Two non-strikers. Well, that doesn't even make sense, Nelly. Two non-strikers from each team, what, what would you take at United? Oh, right, so I can't take the strikers. Um, all right, I'll have a think on that. Either or, R9 or Rooney, says Rob Smooth. Uh, R9, I think he was a very good player. Uh, you say Potter refused Ajax. However, Dutch newspapers say Ajax never wanted uh, Potter in the first place. And if you're Deserby, do you pick Juve, Bayern or Barca if they're all to go for you, says Rob. Well, they're all idiots if they go for Deserby. I won't go anywhere near him. Um, have you had stomach issues before, like gastritis, says Chris? Why? Schweinsteiger or Tony Cruz, says Ben. I think it's got to be Cruz. Uh, thank you very much for that. Who do you prefer, Pedri or Bellingham, says Nathan. I prefer Bellingham. What two players would I take from these teams if I could? Well, you can play this game as well. Um, I would... I mean, look, I'd probably take Yamal. Because I do. I think we do need a right winger. And I, I like Dembele, but I think Yamal's the one that everyone boasts about. So I'd probably take him just to be a hip. Um, But then again, maybe I'd take a midfielder and a centre back because that's probably more important for United. I don't know. I think I'd take Arahu and De Jong. Actually, why am I not taking a PSG player? I don't know. Yeah, I think I'd do that. I think I would do that. Would Rooney start over Haaland in this City side? Says Jace. I don't know. Oh, good save, good shot from distance. Rafina again. And Donnarumma gets well. Well, Donnarumma should save it, but it doesn't mean he will. Went through a bit of a crowd. Good snap. Nah, it's a comfortable save at the end of the day. Um, Arahu or Diaz? I'd have to. I'd have to watch Arahu a lot more to be fair. I mean, I'd, I'd like to say Arahu, but I don't. I don't. I don't know. Smiling. Thank you very much for your chat. Poyol clears PK after how PK treated Shakira. Says Robbo. Oh, Shakira, Shakira. Well, you voted seventy-five percent anyway. Another corner for Barcelona. They've had a good five minutes, actually. Still 1-0 in the game between Atletico Madrid and Dortmund. Remember, that is in Madrid. Dortmund will have a second leg. Do you, th do you think Brentford is good to use in EAFC 24, says Daniel? I don't know. I've not used them. Yeah, Barcelona have definitely come into this game. They were looking a bit slow at the start. Maldini or Baresi, says Bruno. Maldini. Yeah, Maldini.
Evening, Mark. How come you were playing snooker with the Toffee TV guys today? Baz and Ped are top, says Dan. I wasn't playing bloody snooker. Stop being snookerist. Just because I had a shirt and tie on doesn't mean I was playing snooker. You'll find out what we were doing soon. Evening, Mark. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, Barcelona doing well here. Another good cross into the box. I, I, I think this is a really hard game to call. I would say New Camp in the second half favours Barcelona. What's the story in La Liga? I haven't looked at the league table in ages. Barcelona are second on 67. Uh, Girona are third on 65. Atletico Madrid are fourth on 58. And Real Madrid are top with 75. So they're going to win the league. They're eight points clear. But Barcelona probably will finish second. Ball on the edge of the box. He'll shoot from there. Cancelo, well wide. Why are foreign managers expected to succeed in the Premier League, most competitive league, when English managers can't succeed overseas? Hi, by the way. Good point. I don't actually have an answer, but it's a good point. At their best, Gaza or Cantona, says Marky. Well, I hate to be anti-Manchester United, but I think Gaza. Robbo, Robbo says, do you think Mbappe's claim to world's greatest player is at risk? He doesn't seem to be as prolific with the goals nowadays, and he should have left PSG a couple of seasons ago. The ambiguity over a future move shows he's unserious, says Robbo. I think he's going to Real Madrid. I just think he won't announce it until PSG are out of the Champions League in case they play each other. I think, he's, I think he's already a Real Madrid player. I think it's pretty much established. And it's the right move for Mbappe to make. He's probably made it just a little bit late. But uh, he's still, what, 25? So I think he should have gone two or three years ago, really. But there we go. I can smell a goal coming here. Here's Dembele into the box. Oh, I tell you what, if we've got that cook back right, my uh, my sense of uh, smell in relation to leather in net would have been on point. Oh, a, a good shot. And uh, Mbappe's gone down asking for a penalty, but Anthony Taylor has called for an offside. Let's have a look at this. So the shot came in. Yeah, Mbappe's offside from the shot. And he's active. The interesting thing was, if he'd have been onside, there might have been a decision. Have you ever ordered something from Timu? I've heard of it. Uh, if you don't know what Timu is, it's an air online marketplace operated by the Chinese e-commerce company uh, PDD Holdings. And it offers heavily discounted consumer goods, which are mostly shipped to consumers directly from China. I've never used it. And I, I read that from Twitter. So it's not a verification from me. Um, I don't know. I know I haven't. I haven't. Jay says it's crap. If you had to choose between these three for a possible new Man United coach, who, who would it be? Pulis, Southgate or Allardyce? Mate, Havard, you've just you've just described three different shits. One's firm, one's runny and one stinks. I, I'm not choosing any. Um, 
Talking about the sense of smell, oh, today, I get into Leeds, I'm a bit peckish, I'm walking down the street, and I just got a waft. I don't know what it was. I followed it straight into a local bakery. It was a cinnamon roll. Oh, and then I thought, what goes well with that? Combinational smells, cinnamon roll, and a fresh coffee, please. Oh, I just sat there before I drank, or, or ate, or did both, and I went, it smells aren't some smells are fantastic some smells are fantastic what's your favorite smell what smell could you not live without get in the chat and don't start saying freshly cut pubes or stuff like that i mean do they smell i don't know freshly cut grass i'll accept but um in a world without smell what smell would you miss the most petrol says uh uh, Mick and Mingle who and trading cards a lot of people are saying petrol a bit, bit worrying um, petrol or chicken says Nico that's a that's a combo you don't normally get lots of people are saying petrol I've, I've, I've never got that I mean petrol's okay but it's not a cinnamon roll it's not a fresh cup of coffee in the morning. It's not freshly baked bread. Weed. That, that doesn't spread. Old books, says Tim. What, like your pornos what, that have got crusty cum on them? What, what are you talking about? Um, the this is, this, is got, this is going better than I thought. Gingerbread candles and cinnamon, says Paolo. Very descriptive. We like that. Uh, Diego Simeone, says Jonathan. I don't know whether he's talking about the smell of Simeone, in which case it's a bit weird, or he wants him to be the manager of Manchester United. Bacon, says Mads. Um, vegetarians won't be happy, but it's Mads' choice. He likes bacon, or she. A barbecue smell, says Jacob. Uh, fresh cut grass, says Liverpool for life. Um, money, says Vinod. And uh, bread, says Moama. Fresh tar, says James. Actually, quite agree. Fresh tar is nice. Uh, creosote, says Paul. Distinctive. Girlfriend's muff, says George. We'll move on. A program, says Joe CBFC. Um, creosote on a fence, says Ryan. Sarvish likes the smell of his own farts. Freshly ground coffee, says your dad. Uh, lime, says Yard. Does lime have a smell? Vinegar, says Austin. Yes. The smell when you blow a candle out, says Rafa. Distinctive and good. New tennis balls, says Rattle. Proper cheesy feet, says Max. It takes all sauce. Freshly baked cookies, says Thomas. Um, rain on wet grass, says SBR. Wet tarmac, we've had that. Earth. Um, summer rain, says Stego. Does it smell different to winter rain? I don't know. Tomato plants in a greenhouse, says Fartini. I know what you mean. They're a dying breed. Who has a greenhouse these days? And uh, printed paper is a decent one, says Oliver. I know what you mean. I don't like it personally. Uh, it can be a bit creamy. Um, pine tar. Uh, WD40, says Bearded Monster. New goalkeeper gloves, says Andy Boyce. Uh, Sean, I'm not talking about my mum's that. And uh, sand before the rain, says Raj. How do you even find that out? The smell of what rock is cooking, says Paul. I like it. Summer rain, says Logie. No, L Logie likes rotting wood. Nail polish is a good one, Mark, but be careful of those solvents. You could knock yourself out. Tipex, same again. Be responsible with some of your favourite smells. A McDonald's burger, says Easty. Flowers that are tropical, says High Noon. Uh, manure, says Nana. Basically shit. New car smell, says Keenan. And uh, we're talking smells that you'd miss if you had no sense of smell. New football boots, says Miller. Yellow card, Anthony Taylor. He's not given a yellow card to himself. He's given it to Roberto of Barcelona. He doesn't seem very happy because he's going to miss the next match. Uh, Summer rain, says Stego. Ever had a big turn and the water hits your legs, says Sheep. Uh, who was Bert better, Ramos or Puyel, says Sam. And if Man United sacked Ten Hag, would you take Keane, Potter or Southgate? None. Odegaard or Frankie de Jong? Smell of bacon, says Dannett. Um, de Jong. Frax, says my missus is muff. And 
How difficult do you think it will be for Tuchel to find a job in the summer, says one boy. I don't think it would be very hard at all. I don't think it would be very hard at all. I think he'll find a job. I, I, I don't think he deserves a big job, but definitely uh, will do. That was good. Quite enjoyed that. Cigarettes, controversial. Can't live without the smell of menthol, says Superfly. Uh, please do subscribe to the channel, by the way. Bottom right-hand corner. Nil-nil in this game. Um, both teams sort of cancelling each other out at the moment. It's uh, still 1-0 to Atletico Madrid. It's 2-0 to Atletico Madrid against Dortmund. Dortmund could be heading out here. Not even half-time. 2-0 down against Atletico Madrid. I feel Barcelona have come into this game a little bit more. And PSG nearly really do need to be taking a lead here. Although they took a 4-0 lead once in the Champions League and still went out. Not the second leg side for Turkey. It's still the first. I'd replace Ten Hag with Inzaghi of Inter. Says Darth, do you get noticed a lot and do you find it weird? Says Smeltz. Uh, sometimes on both. I didn't watch WrestleMania 40. No, Henry. I heard it was good. Smell when frying onions, says Fuge. I do like the smell of frying onions, but don't eat, I don't like to eat too many of them because the, ne the next day I have a bad stomach and what can only be described as the chronic shit. Love to Cal. Here we go. Rafina. Goal. He took it well. He took it well. The cross came in. Donnarumma went to get it, missed it. It falls to Rafina on the edge of the box. There's people on the line for PSG, but Rafina scores. And uh, that is a good goal. A good goal. And I did say I could smell a goal. And I did also say that Barcelona have come into this game a lot in the last 20 minutes. They now lead in Paris. Comes from Yamal down the right-hand side, actually. Outside of the foot cross, it caused the problem. Give him, give him some credit. And to be fair to Rafinha, he's done well to find a spot in the goal. There are two PSG players on the line. We've gone right between the two. There you go, Barcelona nil. Uh, Darth says, what's your take on Inzaghi? Great job at Inter. I think it's too a niche job at the moment. Do English people have cereal and milk for breakfast, says Pizza? No, we have pizza and milk. Of course we have bloody cereal and milk. We're not bloody cavemen or women or persons, cave persons. We're not. Uh, we've had another great question coming in. If you thought, so, we're almost working... I, you know where I'm going to go next. Um, we've done what's the what's the what's your what's the smell you'd miss the most? What's the sound you'd miss the world? What's the sound you'd miss the most in a world with no sound? I'd actually miss the sound of having a fart. You know, I don't. I'm not saying it's a good thing, but like when you force one out, you want to have some sort of acknowledgement of the work you've put in. I think a silent fart is always a little bit disconcerting. So, uh, yeah, the smell might not be the reward, but the sound often is. You know, when you really have to work to get it out. Yeah, oh, it's not it's not the sound I'd miss the most. Um, I quite like the sound of a ball hitting the post. You know, when you really smash the shit out of it and it's one of those metal posts, the sound of it in the post. 
I've often said this before, it makes no sense. You know when you hit a shot and it hits the post? Obviously you don't get the reward of a goal. But when we used to play down the park and stuff or in a match, if you hit the post from like 20 yards out from a free kick or whatever, you did get, there was a kudos to that. Becky says she'd miss the sounds of blackbird singing. Birdist. Kick says he'd miss the sound of queefing. Don't know what that is. Hope it's nothing rude. If somebody else does, you might get it. Um, the sound of you raging at United, says Leroy. <laughs> sound of a ball hitting the net, says Derek. Do we ever actually hear that, though? The sound of a racket hitting a tennis ball when you leather it for a winner. It's very satisfying, says Connor. What sound would I miss the most? Eternal silence. Here we go. Uh, shoots wide. Cancelo, bit greedy. Oh, Jabba says he'd missed the sound of his mum's voice. At some point, you probably will miss that, mate. I mean, I don't want to be harsh, but, you know, you will. One way or another. It's inevitable. You won't hear it forever. <clears throat> Benoit says he missed the sound of pleasuring a lovely lady. We don't know whether that's a real lady or a lady of the night who is happy because she's being paid to sound happy. But either way, he'd missed the sound. Um... Sound of a clean hit on a golf ball, says Silvert. Opening a beer bottle, says John. These are good sounds. Pouring coke from a glass bottle into a glass of ice on holiday, says Paul. These are lovely sounds. Um, your dad says, I lost, I lost my mum last week and I miss her laugh already. Sad, but a lovely sound. Sound of a roaring crowd. Ooh, yes. Rattling of a dice, says MJL. A foxy lady, says Brigitte. His words, not mine. Would you rather win the Premier League or the Champions League? Not a sound. Sean Dyche's voice is Oz. Very good. Very, very good. Um, the sound of a cricket bat hitting a cricket bat. Oh, cricket ball hitting a cricket bat, Clive. The kettle reaching its climax, says Jonathan. Sound of chalk on a blackboard. Not for everybody, hey? And you can't call them that anymore. Um... I'd miss the sound of the Monday night football jingle, says YOLO. Sound of a log hitting the pan. I read that without thinking what log he meant. He's not talking about the wood log. He's talking about a bum log. Uh, the sound of me snorting a line, says Collie. I suppose you get the double hit of that. Here's Mbappe! Good block. Tumble dryer. I find them irritating. Uh, Dan says, what a surprise. The sound of the sound from you, Porn, Porn without sound, would not be as enjoyable. Always Dan. Always Dan who has to ruin it. Uh, Aiden says, my cat's meow. Either or, biggest legend, Phil Mitchell or Roy Cropper. It's got to be Mitchell. My mo wife's moan when the tip goes in. To Kick ass says, queefing equals fanny fart. Filth. Absolute filth. Somebody always has to ruin it, don't they, with a word that I don't know. They'll be sat there now, laughing to themselves. Well, you've ruined it. Andrew Den says, the sound of Gary Neville going, wow. That sounds like it could be sexual as well. Big says, that's a clip on TikTok now. I like this one from Angry Manala, the intro to Grandstand or Ski Sunday. The, the great thing about, look, smells, the great thing about your senses are they can take you back in time. They're the best time machine in the world. Forget Michael J. Fox and his DeLorean. If you want to go back in time, smell, sound. 
they'll take you back. There's certain bits of music like the intro to Grandstand that will take me back to being eight years of age. There's certain smells that will take me back to Christmas's past. Oh, Ramsey, I think you've just won it. Ramsey says the sound of a volley, a sweet volley as well. We're about to hit half time here. What about the sound of a computer starting up like the PS2? Yes, good. Firing a bullet, a sniper head. We're not all American. <coughs> Hull says, "What are you going to do? What what taste?" Yeah. If I say, "What's your favourite taste?" There'll be more come in the chat than there is on you porn. And I'm not willing to do that. People will just do it for a joke. Some of them will mean it. Dan, no doubt, will have tasted it. But uh, somebody just said they'll miss Will's voice. You better get ready. He's gone in June. Um, I'm joking. It's up for negotiation. Randy Orton's theme music or Edge's theme music that always takes me back to my younger days is off the post. Oh, Barcelona in again. Cut it back, Yamal. Greedy. Greedy. The trouble with Yamal is very, very talented. You're still only 16, mate. You're acting like your bloody Ollie Merzier showing off. And actually, you should have cut it back to Lewandowski. What is that? What's he trying to do? Matthew McFadden says, Edge's theme mu music just edges it. I don't know whether that means Matthew's edging to Edge's theme music or he means it's actually edges it in a 50-50. The sound of the old F1 cars versus the V10s, says Trishan. Uh, Aiden says, my cat's Mia. I've oh, done that one, done that one. V8, 10, V8, V10, V12 engines is Josh. Still two minutes to be added on here. Well, it's a good night for the Spanish. Atletico Madrid are 2-0 up against Dortmund. And Barcelona are 1-0 away to PSG. And it's half time and Mbappe runs up the tunnel. We've all been there, and uh, did, but he didn't look that very happy to do it. The sound of a fire alarm after 30 minutes of sleep at 1am. I hate that sound, says Havard. And motivation day, thank you very much. Well, let's take a look at the stats. Don't forget to subscribe, Botto and Eitan Conner. Um, this is how we're looking at half time. Pause it. Fifty-three percent to forty-seven percent, so quite equal on the stats there. Shots are quite equal as well. They both had three shots on target. They're both pretty equal on corners. They're both pretty equal on pass accuracy, and they're both pretty equal on passes. Yet the scoreline is not pretty equal. It is one nil to Barcelona. That's how we stand at the moment. Thanks for all who's tuning in for the moment. Um, just while we're talking about our favourite sounds that we would miss i'm sure there's that there are other things we can talk about uh don't forget uh to subscribe to the channel um that's football you're all very very welcome um and also uh i will tell you just very very quickly in a moment what games we've got coming up at the weekend with regards to watch alongs because we're we're homing in on another premier league weekend very very quickly uh, will we see Friday night football again, Mark? I don't know. I don't know whether we will see Friday night football again in the Premier League because I don't know whether they've had enough of it now. What we will see is Newcastle play Tottenham at half past 12 on Saturday. I'll be doing a watch along for that. Uh, also, I will be on United stand at half past five for Bournemouth against Manchester United. So two watch alongs for you on Saturday. Newcastle Tottenham on here. Bournemouth against Manchester United on the United stand. And then on Sunday... We've got um, Arsenal against Aston Villa 
half past four, which is a very, very interesting game of football. And then Monday night football is Chelsea against Everton. So we've got a triple for you at the weekend. Make sure you subscribe, get involved with that. Um, this is very sinister. Remember we were saying what smells you would miss if in a world with no smell? Um, what sound would you miss in a, in, a, in a world with no sound? Motivation Day says my dad's belt buckle undoing. I mean, that just leads to all sorts of horror. Is it for a beating or is it for something that's illegal? In fact, they're both illegal. Disgusting. James Bond, thank you very much for your chat. Uh, Jace says, is there any chance Madrid can beat City at the Etihad? If they don't, I think it's City's trophy to win, unfortunately. You would say at this stage it is um, going to be their tournament. Sound of rain on a tin roof, says HMH. Sound of the ocean and the smell of grass after rain. EA Sports, it's in the game, says James Bond. Can Atletico win the Champions League, Mark, says Floppy Fish. Um, if anybody can, they can. As an underdog, um, what did you think of WrestleMania the weekend and The Rock coming back over the past few months? I think it's the best thing it's been for years. Uh, he's gone off. He's gone off again now, Liam. Maybe he will be back, but he he has gone again, hasn't he? Uh, he has gone. Um, a little bit of a little bit of a treat for you, actually. Uh, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a treat in a moment, um, if I can find it. Yes, I can. Let me see. Come on, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Uh, that won't do. Uh, one minute. Um. I might need to. I might need to uh, think this through. Yeah, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. Um, it will. It will work. I. I, I believe it will work. But uh, we'll, we'll leave it for now. We'll leave it for now. Uh, okay, let's go back. Um, just I've just whacked it up on the screen. By the way, we're trying to get into the top hundred new releases, and uh, my book is now available for pre-order. You can scan that QR code with your camera phone and pre-order the book. Please do it. You're the only ones who are going to make this happen because our community is our strength. So please do order the book. Um, it's out in August, but we can hit the top 100, which would be amazing on pre-order sales. So please do support it uh, and buy it. I think you're going to really enjoy it. Uh, my life and story around football combined together with lots of things you don't know about. Uh, really excited about it. Also, in early August, when the book comes out, I will be touring um Norwich doing book signings no the UK and Ireland so yes be lovely to see some of you as well but I'll only talk to you if you have a book to sign they are that's the game I've cleared it so please do support it and buy it on pre-order now by scanning the QR code um which is right next to me what historical game you'll acknowledge in your lifetime for me it's the 6-1 Barca match that was one of the worst ever ref displays Tanish I don't understand the question Please give me a nice smell that you would miss. Um, would you be excited for United in the conference lead? A solid shout at European silverware for the Reds. I'd hate it, Esther B. Buggy, thanks for your super chat. Rock is back in the summer. Pro wrestling is cool, says Liam. Do you think PSG are missing Messi and Neymar, says Ryan? No, I think they were very disjointed with three Galacticos. What's your opinion on this Barcelona side? <coughs> says so Justin. Well, my opinion is not a cough. I had a tickly throat. Um... I think um, Premium says, I pre-ordered your book a couple of days ago and I can't wait to read it. Um, also, the who's winning in the Dortmund games is Tottenham, Tot Thomas. It's 2-0 to Atletico Madrid. If I get a book, will you suck it, says Biggin. Have you left the football fill-in? If so, how come, says Rich. Yes, I've, I've, I've quit it because I'm fed up of uh, Jamie... Um, cheating in the quiz and sending the answers to Ben Foster the night before and Ben Foster still can't remember them all on the day but uh, cheating's cheating and I've said I won't have any more of it so I've quit um, the smell of a fairground on a summer evening says George very distinctive um, I'd miss the smell of fresh air says Dylan 
Eric Dyer has been really solid for Bayern. Would you have taken him for United? He's no Min Jae, but seems pretty consistent. No, Dennis. The Bundesliga is not a good league. Uh, who do you think will progress at the Allianz next week, says Havoc? I think it's going to be a great game. Um, I'm pissed off that they're both on the same night, if I'm being completely honest. But um, it happened last night. It's going to happen next Wednesday night as well. I think Man City will beat Real Madrid. Um, I still think Arsenal can do it. Corrupt says, two Cal back at Chelsea and they will win again. Um, Barcelona could be 3-0 up, says X-Rex. Right, you know I'm going to do it. We've watched, We've already said, what's your favourite smell you'd miss? We've already said, what's the ve your favourite sound you'd miss? Uh, I'm now going to say, what, what are the five? Hear, no, hear, smell, taste touch what's the fifth sense C <laughs> oh my god why did we not do that one first why did we not do that one first oh god there's so many things I'd hate I I'd miss the sight of some I can't say on here oh <laughs> that, that could have been anything. Didn't have to be what you think it is. Could have been, could have been Solskjaer's goal. I tell you what, I tell you what. Nobody said it as well. Um, when you're talking about a sound you'd miss, it's very niche, but there's very few things that make my spine tingle and my shoulders shake. Three words: Clive Tilsley. And Solskjaer's won it. Four words. Yeah, that. Those four words for me. Ooh. That's got to be four of the best words I've ever heard. Yeah. Um, Wolves TV says, I've started doing content on TikTok. What advice would you give? Grow up and touch grass. Tuchel, I don't know. Honestly, mate, I don't know. You're asking the wrong person there. Um, okay, I'll ask the question. Can be football related. What site would you miss the most in a world without eyes? Peter Drury's voice. You can still hear it, mate. You just can't see it. You can't see a voice. The shine on Pep's head, says Robert. <laughs> Sheep says a hard on. Well, you can still feel it. Unless you wanna unless you get satisfied by looking at someone else's, in which case everyone everyone's a winner. Gary Neville said somebody there. You could say that Gary is better without sights. You know, voice might sound better. Um Yeah, I'm not the mum jokes belong in nineteen ninety three, mate. One, I won't read them because they're not funny. And two, I won't be burnt by them because I went to school in the 90s and that was basically how you wound anybody up. So mum jokes, really, come on, you can do better than that. Uh, Truce says, I'd miss seeing you. What a lovely message. Uh, Declan Rice's Luton, last minute winner, says, hey, lads. Um, Belly Buttons, says, Christoph. Uh, Icelandic Landscapes, says, Ian, Ian Riley. A fresh trim. Didn't say where. Man United style of play, says Ben Thornton. Tottenham bottling a trophy, says Johnny. Fresh bag of Charlie, says DP. Jurgen Klopp's shiny teeth, says Jack. Harry Maguire's forehead, says Joshua. Uh, Matt Hull says erectile dysfunction. Well, there's nothing to see with that anyway. That's That's the problem. I see missing the captain's armband around... I miss seeing the captain's arm round around Maguire. He truly led by example, says Fish. You've not really grasped it. You know, you can't see anything forever. Uh, I'd miss watching football, says Gems. Yes, that, that would be at the top of there. Um, and it's very encompassing. Uh, my wife's bottom, says Zombie. Nothing wrong with that. 
you're married. Hi, Mark. What's your favourite Champions League game final of recent years, says Brandon? We're not talking about that. We're talking about things that you'd miss if you couldn't see. Um, Joel Webber says, yeah, I'm not even going to read that. You shouldn't even be paying for that. I'd miss seeing Josh Allen hurd hurdling people on a Sunday afternoon, says YOLO. Um, driving my car, says Be Bear. Well, please don't drive your car if you can't see. Um, because the only thing you'll be seeing is a long stretch in prison. Um, HLF says, I I'd miss you seeing you doing a stretch. I think he means a stand-up stretch and not stretch in prison. Uh, the Luke Bennett leaked video. I do not know what this is all about, but uh, I feel that Luke may have got himself into tr trouble. Why do you? Who, who do you want to win tonight? Says Becky. And would miss seeing the sea and the beach and Klopp and football matches. Lovely stuff. I don't care who wins tonight. I've got no horse in the race. I just want to see a bit of football, you know. Um, Andy Ford, thank you very much for super chat. Do you think YouTube is as good or even better than Telly? Says Kenneth. I had a very good chat about this today. We'll talk about it in a moment. Uh, please do buy the book. Scan the QR code, camera phone. Support the community. Get us in the top 100 before it's even come out. Send a big up yours to the mainstream. Um, every bit, every little helps. Um, my daughter's smile, says Ethan. Lovely. Would you take Mendes or Cancelo for United, says Joel. We haven't got a bloody left back. That's like saying to me when I haven't eaten for a week, would you like a McMuffin breakfast bap from McDonald's or a Greg's sausage and bean melt? I'll take either. I'm desperate. Um, where can I buy the books, says Warner? Scan the QR code. If you're outside the UK, Amazon. If you want the audible, Amazon. If you want a signed copy, WH Smith, and you live in the UK. If you want a signed copy and you don't live in the UK, Amazon, and then get yourself to the UK or Ireland in August to meet me to get it signed. Are you going to start your own pro club, says HLF? I nearly started on Sunday. I didn't get, I'm not very well. I'm now trying to figure out whether it's worth my time. Um, I'd still be playing for Girth and Turf if they didn't put me at right back. Sackins says Charlie's Theron. Don't know whether he means smell. Taste, touch, sight. We haven't done touch, so you're okay. That would be a criminal. With you lot, I'm very surprised that nobody has said porn in relation to things that you would miss seeing. We're stuck in traffic for three hours today. Worst car journey you've had. Either a pole, either or pole. Who would work best in the Prem? Lewandowski or Mbappe? Well, we're about to start the second half here. Come on. Let's go. Let's do it. There we go. Second half's up and running. Um, what's the worst car journey you've ever had? Um, it was probably about 12 years ago. It was a frosty, cold night. I was driving back from Coventry to Birmingham. Uh, normally takes about an hour. Took me about four and a half hours because... It was icy on the roads and uh, people were just breaking down all over the place. So I ended up gridlocked. I needed a piss at the start of the journey and it just got to a point where I couldn't wait anymore. So um, I had to go in a bottle, which I had to finish drinking. To It was basically one of them green 7-Up bottles about that big. So I had to, um, there's about that much left. Not thinking it through, I drank. I should have just tipped it out. Um, anyway, started going for a piss, and about that much through the bottle, I realised this was bigger than the bottle could take. So I had to stop, which is horrible. And I think you probably get to an age where you can't stop mid-flow. Had to stop, wind the window down, tip it out. Of course, I'm stuck in, I'm stuck in three, three lanes of traffic. They know what I'm doing. The windows have steamed up. So I, team it, I go to tip it out. But obviously, as I tip it out, to my right, it's um, 
It's a lorry looking down. And I still got my pants halfway down. So I just went with it, tipped it out, wound the window up, steamy again, finished it off. I mean, nothing happened. I didn't get locked up or anything like that. I just felt embarrassed. Ooh, shot over the bar from PSG. The funny thing was, that was only halfway through. I still had two hours more, and then I needed another one. But what I did the second time is I wound the window down just to make sure that um, what was next to me was a car or a hedge. Uh, and then I did it again. <clears throat> Good job it wasn't a number two, says Ave. Well, I've told that story many a time. Many a time. I uh, got caught short walking to college, went behind a bush. I had to use my boxer shorts as a toilet paper. I went commando for the rest of the day. Luckily, it was a two-wipe shit because I've had ten before and I would have been in all sorts of a mess. Look. Goal! Goal, 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 goal! It's Dembele. It's 1-1. One, one. I think the keeper's made a mistake here. Hey, look, when you've got to go, you've got to go. You, you know, you can't leave it. It was really about go behind that bush or do it or, or do it in your in your pants. It was, it was, it was an either-or. Do you go and take a crap behind a bush or do you shit yourself? It was that simple. And that was a fried onion the origins of that story was too many fried onions the night before. Um, let me see this goal back. Dembele picks it up on the left-hand side, cuts inside, gives it back to Mbappe, comes back to him. I think it's just sheer power. I don't think the keeper can do with it anything. No, it's just sheer power. It's, it's above the keeper's head. He just smack, he's, he's absolutely wellied this. He should be sponsored by Hunters. Hunters wellies. Pure power, says Fennec. It's like a bloody rocket. <clears throat> What's more likeable, Agbonglahor or Ted Bundy, says Connor. I try not to talk about Agbonglahor anymore. I think it's a, a one-way street trying to have a debate with him. It's like arguing with a... Anyway, we, I'm not going to do it. Um, Premier League most expensive player, says Andy. Who is the Premier League's most expensive player at the moment? Good question. Because it's not necessarily the best player. I think Salah and De Bruyne are the best players in the Premier League, but they wouldn't be the most expensive because they're over 30. I'd say the most, the most valuable player in the Premier League at the moment is probably Erling Haaland. Some say Foden, some say Saka. I think it'd be Haaland because he's a goal scorer as well. Rice is, look, holding midfielder compared to a goal scorer. They're in again. The 2 1 up. PSG. PSG. OMG. FFS. PSG. Vettina. 2 1. What a turnaround in the space of five minutes. What a comeback. What a turnaround. What a turnaround. I haven't seen a turnaround like that since Stars in Their Eyes 1993 when my auntie's best friend went on. She looked like a female version of Jerry Halliwell. She turned around and they turned her into Rod Stewart. Unbelievable. Everyone thought she was going to be a female or something. Rod Stewart. What's more? I've done that one. Hey, I'll tell you what. It's 2-1 to PSG. We've got a cracking game on our hands here. It's still 2-0 to Atletico Madrid against Dortmund. Um, but we had a good question earlier. What a programme Stars in Their Eyes says, Jason. If you don't know what Stars in Their Eyes was, right, it used to be a presenter called Matthew Kelly. There was rumours, but they were never found out. So I'm not going to say anything more than that. He presented the show 
and basically you go on. Uh, remember, imagine if I'm on stars in their eyes, right? Come on, it'll ask me questions. I'll go, yeah, my name's Mark Goldbridge. Um, I'm probably the best YouTuber in, in the football industry space and I'm hilarious and I've got a new book out where you can scan the QR code there and pre-order it. But um, I've always liked this artist and um, I just love their songs and I bought all their albums and um, tonight, Matthew, I just really want to do them credit. Who are you going to be? Tonight, Matthew, and then you walk behind the smoke and then you, as you walk out, just before it, you say, Tina Turner. And then I walk out and I'm, I'm dressed up as Tina Turner, which actually I just realised would you wouldn't be able to do because it, you're not allowed to do that sort of stuff. But I do like Tina Turner. They'd say, you can't do that now. It's not the 90s. It's unacceptable. I'd say, why can't I be Tina Turner? I love her music. Just put a wig on. We don't have to do, do anything else. And a dress. And let me walk around like this. Not Bush City Limits. Um, but yeah, it was basically, you'd go on. You'd say, tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be. You'd walk out like this. And you'd turn around, come back through the smoke. And you'd be Freddie Mercury or Tina Turner or Britney Spears. It's uh, it's a it's a great, great, great show. And uh, they should bring it back. The trouble is, everybody clapped no matter what. So if I came out and said, tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be Michael Jackson, right? And... I came out looking like Michael Jackson and then I'd go, then he'd go, I don't know. What's the start of a Michael Jackson song? I don't know. What's, give me, give me, give me some words of the start of a Michael Jackson song. I can't, I don't like Michael, I always knew Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson, Jimmy Savile, I never liked them as a kid. So I'd have been safe. But what was, um, I can't think of a word. Yeah, but I need the first few words. Anyway, imagine the Michael Jackson song where I'm going. Beat it, beat it, beat it. Even if I sang it like beat it, beat it, beat it, they'd still cheer. They always sat, they always cheered you no matter what. That's the reason there will never be a reboot, says Logie. Yeah, good point. That's why Stars in Their Eyes died, actually. When you think about it, Stars in Their Eyes died. Because if you were at the bar, PSG are all over them here. It's um, we're too we're too. Um, I even you see this is what I mean. This is why Stars in the Rise couldn't come back because I don't even know how to word this without potentially offending somebody. But basically, if I did want to be Tina Turner. How could they make me look like Tina Turner without offending people? But then I would say, well, you're offending me because I can't be the artist I want to be because they won't let me do it. And that's probably why Stars in the Rise has been cancelled. Uh, this, this Is Your Life was a very good programme, Kefir. Very, very good. Mark, are you narrating your audio book? Yes. If you weren't, who's your dream person to do it? Probably Tina Turner, but she's dead. Look, I'm not taking the piss about Tina Turner. If you know, you know. What did I call the stadium for my TUSFC team? If you know, you know. I'll wait to see the word. What was the name of my TUSFC FIFA stadium? The Thunderdome, yes. One of the best songs ever written. The lyrics, the rhythm, the voice. Who sang it? Tina Turner. Rest in peace. The Thunderdome. That would be my dream song on Stars in the Rise. That's why I said it. Tonight, Matthew, I'm Tina Turner. Mess with everybody's head because also I'd have to be dressed as a woman. PSG are playing really well now. Thunderdome's a great song. Oh, 
We don't need another hero. Tina Turner's dead. Yes, she is, Stephen. It's not breaking news. Well, it might be for you. She, I think she died last year. Yeah, 2023, May. Well, looking at a recent picture, she, well, that's her last picture, a recent picture. God knows. Don't know whether she was cremated, but um, yeah, she looked her age at the end. Um, did she have a good innings? Well, she was 83. For a woman, they can do better, but I don't know what she got up to. I don't know. I don't like to talk of the dead. They can't answer back. The streets will never forget Kenton Goldbridge. Oh, what a time to be alive, Ricardo. What a time. Probably my favourite ever career mode. I think it was COVID. Best old programmes. I used to love Crystal Maze, says Rob Smooth. Um, PSG are doing really well here. Barcelona need to find a way back. Did you ever watch Golden Balls? And wouldn't, would you... Did you go on Gladiators? I think you could win it, says Ben. I think the same. Genuinely think the same. Apparently, Golden Balls was presented by Jasper Carrot, who lives quite locally to me. I think he's alive. Um, apparently, he's really arrogant. He went to a friend of mine wedding and he gave them a signed copy of his book. I mean, that's some level of arrogance, isn't it? Imagine going to somebody's wedding and their wedding present is a signed copy of their book. Are we at a wedding this year? After August? Don't get them a present. Actually, I like that. I like, I like the arrogance of it. Crystal Maze gave me anxiety, says Nick P. I've got to be honest. I'm not saying... I'm not saying... Look, I never liked Jimmy Savile. There was just something about him. At six years of age, I had the ick with Jimmy Savile. Like, he made me made me feel... He just was creepy. The police should have spoke to me. I'd have told him. I'd have said, Officer, there's something funny about that Savile. It just doesn't sit right with me. And I'm certainly not sitting on his lap. I just think there's something strange. I don't trust him. You've got a career as a detective, lad. Um, Jackson never liked his music. Obviously, very different people. But um, Barca have not scored. It's 2-1. But I didn't like the presenter from the Crystal Maze as well. I'm not saying nice guy, probably a nice guy, but I'm just saying uh, Jasper Carrot's daughter is Dawn from the office. She is, Robbo. She is. No Easy Way Out by Robert Tapper. What a tune, Wan. Rocky Four. Krypton Factor was brilliant, Lee. Little known fact... You know the assault course at the end of the Krypton... Oh, the Krypton Factor was brilliant. I'm watching it tonight. On I'm watching it tonight. I'm watching the Krypton Factor. That will be on YouTube. Rolf Harris went through my radar. I actually liked Cartoon Time. Yeah, that one I didn't get. The trouble is in the late 80s, as kids, we were bombarded. I mean... There wasn't a TV programme you could go on without fear of something happening, in hindsight. Um, but Krypton Factor was a brilliant programme. At the end of it, they had this assault course. Oh, my God. Well, it was only about half an hour down the road from me. It wasn't one road. That's a long road for half an hour, but it was quite local. This is a football watch along TWM, but it's not... It's European. Uh, please do subscribe to the, car the bottom right corner. Still nil-nil for Ipswich. A stay at the fair. Big game for them. Brandon Atkinson says, if there was no food, what would you miss the most? Well, you know what? You can adapt your diet because if you'd said to me a couple of months ago, you won't be eating bread anymore, I'd have said, well, I may as well be... 2-2! Rafina! 
It's a lovely goal. It's probably the goal of the night. A little dink over the top. He's beaten the offside trap. And he bangs it into the top corner. I'm going to call this assist of the night and goal of the night. It's one of those ones where a midfielder's got it in the midfield. He dinks it over the back line. Rafina angles his run perfectly and then bangs it into the bottom corner. Watch this back. Donnarumma's bad kick out. Oh, it's a lovely take. It's a lovely take. Who's who hits the pass? Who hits the pass? I've got my eyes in and I can't bloody see. It's definitely not De Jong and it's definitely not Xavi. Sorry, it's not. It's definitely not De Jong and it's definitely not Gundogan. Timed his run to perfection. I think it was Roberto. Pedri. Pedri, who only came on, that must be that must have been one of his first touches. I didn't even know he'd come on. Pedri came on for Roberto. That that's got to be one of his first passes then. Carlos says a lot of incredible goals have gone in this round. Yes. We've been spoiled, really. It's like it's like Ferrero Roche. Pedri, not Pedo. Bloody hell. That's because we've been talking about the late eighties. It was his first touch, says Lewis. What? What about your pal Gary Glitter? This is tumbleweed. Why is Gary Glitter my pal? Um, that, felt, that goal was fantastic, goal, says Austin. 15,000 people watching for a game like this is incredible. Make sure you subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. I need to get the stats carousel running around, but please do scan the QR code, order the book, Legends. Right, um... Later in the week, I will be reading an excerpt from the original book, actually, to tell you what it's all about. Um, Mark, if everyone on Earth stopped sneezing tomorrow, how long do you think until it would be on the news? Says Mason. I think it's the sort of thing that we might, that might not hit the news. How would people know? I don't know that I would notice that I haven't sneezed. Would you? It's a great question, Oz. I'd never thought about it, but I think you might have uh, that. Uh, Fort Boyard, Leslie Grantham's webcam game, says Miss Con. Don't remember that one. Um, anyway, Brandon said, if there was no food, what food would you miss? I don't eat bread anymore and um, I don't really miss it. Um, what a game, though. 1-0 to Barca, 2-1 to PSG, 2-2 two -two now. Don't know if you've been asked this yet, but do you think Saka should have just shot the ball at the end of the game instead of looking for a penalty, says Tuke. You know what? I don't think it was a penalty for Arsenal on Saka because I think he kicked his foot into Neuer. But I also don't think the referee should have given a penalty to Bayern. So in a roundabout way, you could have had two penalties or no penalties or one penalty and the other one doesn't get a penalty. I think the right conclusion came through. And I think Tuchel was a bit of a shit, actually, speaking publicly, that he spoke to the referee and the referee said he should have given a penalty. I thought Tuchel was a bit, you know, wrong to do that because if you didn't see it, Raya puts the ball down to kick the goal kick and then they obviously say Gabriel's going to do it. So he passes it over to Gabriel who picks it up and puts it down. 
So technically, all right, it's a red, it's a handball. But I'm telling you now, if that handball had been given, there'd have been uproar from Arsenal, quite rightly. So I just think sometimes we do... Mo Look, there's plenty to moan about VAR and officiating genuinely. Like, you know, there's so much. But I, I think sometimes we do go looking for it. Like, I did think it was a penalty when wan tackled um, Elliot. I don't think Saka's was a penalty and I don't think it's debatable. And I also don't think that Bayern should have got a penalty for that handball. I think common sense needs to come in. Friendly Neighbourhood says, uh, welcome, to, uh, sorry, welcome to Members Club. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, you know, people are going, well, it should have been a penalty because the ball was active and Gabriel picked it up. But you're telling me if that had been given, Arsenal fans would have gone, you're right, you're right. It was active and it should have been given. For me, it's no worse than the amount of back passes that don't get given as back passes. It's called common sense officiating, you know. Yes, technically, Reyes put the ball down and it should be a goal, counted as a goal kick. But common sense is Arsenal have decided to take the goal kick from the other side and Gabriel's going to take it and pass it to Reyes. It's No, I know it's the rules, but we don't always have to follow the rules. We, common sense is important. That's why... Wolves onside goal was given as offside at the weekend because some, some twat with a rule book has never played the game. Rules are not rules, Johnny. Rules do not need to be bloody followed. They, you know, it would have been an absolute disgrace, in my opinion. And the rules are not followed strictly in football. So don't start saying rules are rules when they don't follow every rule. That, Like I said, not... 90% of back passes don't get given. Well, rules are rules, so don't tell me that rules are followed all the time. Common sense is in football all the time. I think they got it right on both. Wasn't a penalty on Saka, wasn't a penalty uh, for the handball. Rule is a rule, is a fact, says Norman. Yeah. But a rule is not always followed is a fact as well, Norman. I tell you what, there used to be a... Pro you just need DePaul to foul to win myself £150, says Marcus Music. You ever watch Strike It Lucky and take your pick? Ben Thornton. Strike It Lucky, I think it used to be on a Monday night. <laughs> What's a hot spot? Not Barrymore. Um, they used to have this program. I don't know whether anyone remembers it. I think it was in America and we took it in the UK. Normally, we come up with the ideas and the Americans take it. But I think they came up with this one. Um, this is your life, right? Basically, I'd be sat here now. But let's go back to the 80s and 90s. So you'd be an actor on EastEnders, right? You'd be doing your scene with all your fellow actors. They'd be in on it. They'd be in on it but you'd be going, oh, Kathy, get pat, pat, pat. Get me a butt, get me a butty and a piece of toast, right? And then behind you, old Michael Aspel had come up, dressed up in the worst disguise ever, and go, tonight, Frank, this is your life. Da 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 da. -da you go, I can't fucking believe it. You bastard, you bastard, right? Then you go back to a studio. Michael Aspel will be there with his book that says this is your life on it. And then he'd go, Frank, there were rumours about you at school. Nonce in on the teachers. Um, don't know how that works, Frank. But anyway, we've got your teachers from school. They're here today. Those teachers would walk out. Some of them would be able to go, you know what? Those rumours were never proven. All Frank was doing is he was desperate to go to the toilet. And ours was the closest one. And it just so happened to come into the cubicle when I was there. Oh, you cheeky little Frank. We all loved you. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Then then someone else had come out. And that's that's what it was all about. That's what This Is Your Life was all about. You'd just get all these people who would, from your life, coming out. I don't know whether it would work now. <clears throat> this is a great game. 2-2, two, two, 20 minutes to go. Newcastle Tottenham, half 12, Saturday. I think that's going to be a good game as well. Who thinks going to win between that? Newcastle at home against Spurs. Spurs going for Champions League football. Newcastle going for fuck all. 
But so they've still got Newcastle have still got a chance actually. If Newcastle beat Spurs on Saturday lunchtime, they're ahead of Manchester United going and United play on the evening. So Newcastle would go with a win to sixth. I fancy Spurs, but never, never, never write off um, Newcastle at St. James's Park. Do you think we're going to get a winner here, Mark? 2-2, Paris Saint-Germain against Barcelona. Um, do I think we're going to get a winner here? I think at some point Barcelona will sit and take what they've got. Take it back to the new camp. Lewandowski or Griezmann, Mark? Lewandowski. Easy work. MT90 says, do you remember Beatles About, Mark? I would love to bring... I think this is my transition from YouTuber to mainstream. I think Beatles About, Goldbridge is About, would be brilliant. So Beatles, Beatles About was basically Jeremy Beadle, who is dead. Um, and he would basically, I think he used to do it to members of the public, which is, I think it's funnier doing it to a normal member of the public than a celebrity because a celebrity has always got their wallet to fall back on after the humiliation. Whereas a member of the public, you know, they're probably on an average wage and they get bantered by the nation. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know why that makes it more enjoyable. I, I, I genuinely don't. I just think. I just think also, members of the public, their reaction are far more funnier. But basically, what Beatles about was, was basically, if it was Goldbridge's about, what I'd do is, you'd, um, I'd be dressed up as a bus, dustbin man, and uh, or, or person, and uh, basically, you'd, um, you'd have a dustbin lorry, and, and other people, right? You'd go to the person's house, and you'd accidentally reverse the dustbin lorry into their brand new car they'd come out cam hidden cameras and you just you know keep doing things that damage their car and house for about five minutes and you film it all the reaction and then when they're just about ready to beat you up you'd go ha ha look it's not it's not real it's me you'd never get away with it now because you'd probably get somebody who'd like seriously hurt you in 99, Mankind did a This Is Your Life for The Rock. It's on YouTube. It's one of the highest segments for TV views. Live history, says Anto. TV, best TV show was Monkey, says Falky. I never liked that. Remember the Go Light Lils? Don't know what that is, Kenneth. Andrew says, watch the game. I am watching the game. I just like talking to you lot. Sorry. Fucking hell, if you, want, if you want to watch the game and listen to the commentary, they've got it on TNT. Sorry for enjoying myself talking to you lot. I don't normally... I only do it on a game that I'm not that interested in. Um, Mark, what's something that sounds nice but actually isn't? E.g. a puppy farm sounds like a lovely place to visit but definitely isn't. Chris Brown. Why? What's a puppy farm? <laughs> something that sounds nice... But definitely isn't. Well, I'll, I'll read some out. I always used to want to go on Funhouse. I think if I did now, it would be noncy. Trigger Happy TV. Unbelievable stuff, says uh, Globetrotter. <laughs> Cross comes in. Well done. Good defending by... Uh, Neves there. Barcelona. Jao Felix is on the pitch. I think the best... I'm just going to say it. So, basically, somebody just said there, what are two words that sound nice but definitely aren't goal barcelona that that's for psg that was well timed corner 
From 2-1 down to 3-2 up, I think Barcelona might, might, might just have taken a grip on this game. What a game it's been. It's Christensen. Not Helena Christensen. She was a supermodel. This is the former Chelsea defender, Christensen. Didn't even have to do much of a leap. It sort of he had to lean down to get ahead on it. Incredible game of football, on another incredible night in the Champions League. Still two 0 between Madrid and uh, Atletico Madrid and Dortmund, which means it's a very very good Spanish night. Mike says it's PSG are very lucky the away goals rule doesn't exist anymore. Big, big, big people who tested the beds when the manager had to pop out. Newbie was left in charge of the furniture shop on Beadle's About. This is Kenneth. Greg, thanks very much for your super chat. Um, so look, yeah, somebody just said, can you think of a, two words together that sound nice but definitely aren't? Well, it can be nice for some, but what about cream pie? It sounds nice. But it's not something you get from Greg's. Donnarumma is getting a lot of credit. Uh, not, no, he's not. He's not getting a lot of credit. A lot of people are saying he's got to come for that. Which is basically what you do for a cream pie as well. I've said too much. Mark, even as a Chelsea fan, I've been a subscriber to you since your first 500k on United Stand. You talk with logic and passion. Thank you for being epic. Ross, thank you very much. Please do buy the book. Scan the QR code as it goes round. Support the book. Really want to get it in the top 100 when it's a pre-order. It'd be great. Been a good show tonight. Mbappe's been invisible. Forgot he was playing says corrupt. Well, if he goes out, he can announce his Real Madrid move. I yeah, I th I think I think there it is. Scan it with the camera phone. Um, I genuinely think that uh, Mbappe at Real Madrid is a fantastic signing. But what you've also got to take into account is the ego of someone like Mbappe playing with people like Bellingham and Camavinga. And Vinicius and Rodrigo and Valverde, uh, all these players they've already got, they've all got to buy into the fact that Mbappe is the star. Uh, Jack Hammer says things that sound nice but aren't yellow snow. This is a good one. We've had Puppy Farm, Cream Pie. Yellow snow. Can you think of two words together that sound nice but aren't? Golden shower. Showers are good. Gold is good. A shower of gold sounds great. If you ask, if you think, do not ask for a golden shower. Um. No, slave trade, Morgan, sounds as bad as it is. It's horrific. David Boyd's come up with a good one. Pearl necklace. Do not go into a jeweller's and ask a man for a pearl necklace. I wonder if they'd get arrested for giving it you. Is that a get out? I would hope so. You're not going to get any jewellery. Um... LFM says lemon party. The Lemon Party of Canada was a frivolous Canadian political party which is operated on a federal level and provincially in Quebec. bit political then. Paul Parker, if you know, you know, says Dad. Daff. Manchester City, says Jack D. We're, we're talking about two words together that sound nice but aren't. We've had golden shower. We've had 
pearl necklace. We've had cream pie. Um, soggy biscuit sounds nice, but not, says Ben. I don't like the word soggy, full stop. I don't think there's anything I like about that. Nice to like about that, Ben. Can you remember the Dad's Store Tech Challenge, says Greg? I can. No, Adrian, I disagree. Maths, yeah, I'm not reading that one. I know exactly what you're doing. Goal Dortmund! That's not two words that sound nice but aren't because they actually are nice for Dortmund. They have actually got one back. I think it's, is it Mallon who scored? No, it's not Mallon. It's Haller. That is a massive goal for Dortmund. 2-1 in Spain. Take it back to Dortmund next week. They're only one behind. Every tie has got something in it. Two draws last night and two one-goal deficit wins or losses tonight. Um, we're talking two words together that sound great but aren't. Chocolate finger has come out from Chin. Glory hole, says Lewis Walsh. Wet dream, says FPL Fossil. I don't think wet dream sounds nice. Uh, on a sinister level, it sounds like you've gone to sleep and had got yourself wet, which is sort of what it is. This is probably my favourite section of the night. Rim job doesn't sound nice, Candy. It's got to sound nice, but isn't. Golden shower was a prime example. Pearl necklace. They sound nice, but they're actually not in reality. One's going to stink a piss and one's going to get sticky around the neck. <laughs> Nick says... Two words that sound nice but aren't. I'm pregnant. Well, they can be the best two words in the world. They can they can take the wind out of you and make you faint in a bad way. Depends who it's with and the timing. The clap. That's a good one. Pineapple pizza, I think, is good. I think it sounds exactly what it is. Nice. What's Anthony Taylor doing? Penalty check. No penalty. For PSG. Well, there wasn't much of an appeal, to be honest. Cleveland, according, if you've not heard of it, search. This is Paul Taylor. Uh, Sandeep says chocolate starfish, but I don't think that sounds nice anyway. Luke Jones says two words that sound nice, but oh, I'm not reading that. Manchester City says Jack D. I'm, I'm going to have to Google one of these before I read it, because it is a super chat, so I feel I need to read it. But Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Don't Google this, because Google get very concerned about it. But, right. I've never heard of this. It doesn't sound nice. It sounds like you need to Google it, right? So I don't think this passes the test, Nicholas. But he's... So two words that sound nice but aren't. I don't think this sounds nice anyway. I just never heard of it. Boston steamer. Now, don't Google it because Google will be why are people looking at this. A Boston steamer is the act of ending a relationship by depositing a steaming pile of shit on the back of a sleeping lover after a night of passion, followed by a hasty departure. Who does this? It's disgusting. So you have a night of passion with somebody, and then while they're asleep, you crap on their back. They're not, it's not like they're not going to wake up. I've who, who makes this stuff up? Disgusting. I've never heard of it, and I also think nobody would ever do it. 
Ooh. Cross comes in from Mbappe. Glasgow smile doesn't sound nice Anglo-Saxon, and it definitely isn't. Pink boot, says Roz. Chuff Brigade. I'm, that's mine. If you know, you know. Yeah, Chuff Brigade, basically, I've invented this. So Chuff Brigade could sound like Chuff from a train station, Brigade like Fire Brigade. What it actually means is, if you're part of the Chuff Brigade, it means somebody who's like 18 who tries to tell people that De Bruyne is better than Gerrard when they couldn't have watched Gerrard's career because they were stuck up their mum's chuff. And not because they're weird, but because they hadn't been born. Therefore, they're part of the chuff brigade. Stuck up their mum's chuff because they weren't born. That's not sexist. Men can't give, in, give birth and they don't have chuffs. Well, they can have chuffs if they... Well, they're not... Well, I don't know what they'd call themselves then, but they can't give birth. Chelsea smile, if you know, you know. Still doesn't sound nice, Nick. LFM says apparently someone called Amber did the Boston steamer. Never go out with someone from Boston, says Robbo. Yeah, well, Boston always sounded quite nice to me, but uh, yeah. Oh, he's going to book him. He's going to book him. Two minutes to go here. Football fans, especially the ones in Turkey, says Les. <clears throat> I've, I've learned some words myself tonight. Some of them quite shocking, really. Um, please do subscribe to the channel. We're only 40 away from 132,000. So please do subscribe. We could hit that before full time. It's been a very good stream, you know. I'm, to think I was stuck in traffic at 5 o'clock tonight and it said you won't get back till 10 past 7. I had to do United Stand and this, and I was like, I'm never going to get to do the Champions League stream tonight. The fact that I have, and if I hadn't done it, I'd have missed out on quite probably one of my favourite sections we've ever done, apart from talking about football. Two words that sound like nice but aren't. If you're ever going to clip anything up for TikTok, that last 10 minutes should just be a compilation of me saying two words and what they mean. It would do views. Golden showers, cream pies, pearl necklace, Boston steamer, chocolate starfish. Paul Doherty says Puff Daddy. But that sounds worse when in reality it's just a rapper. Gold digger. Says cats. That, 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 that's a good one. Gold digger's a good one. Sounds like you're digging for gold when actually it's someone who marries you because they want your money. Now called a wag. I'm going to look at it. Brian Dempsey keeps mentioning this same one. And uh, I don't know what it is. I have to be careful with some of these. Naive Bridge. What was it? Ugh. I'm not reading that one out. And I didn't know what it was. Why is it called a rainbow kiss? Oh, shit. Um, anyway, let's move on. Um, let, let's move on. Uh, that was mine. Um, Manchester City. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, yeah, you're all throwing up stuff now where you're clearly Googling them. So I'm not reading anymore. Uh, Michael says, as a Liverpool fan, it's actually nice to finally see you guys as a bogey club. Keep the grey hair. It suits you. I appreciate your fairness, says Michael. <clears throat> I'm getting all sorts in here now. It's been a good section. We might not revisit it. Roman shower is a type of architecturally designed shower stall that does not require a door or curtain. 
So that's doesn't sound good. And PSG on the attack. Could be their last attack. With two minutes to go, shot and deflected wide for a corner from Mbappe. Yeah, I've heard about the Alabama Stanley. I've heard of that one before. Uh, Iron Maiden is the name of a band which makes it sound nice, but I actually I think it's a torture device. So that's, that's actually a good one. Two words together that sound nice that aren't. So you'd go Iron Maiden, really good rock band. Reality, yes, but also a horrible torture device. Gems, thank you very much. These streams remind me of going for Goldbridge, says Ricardo. SN Gaming says Angel Delight. Well, Angel Delight sounds like a happy servant of God, if you're religious, but actually is a is glor is a glorious dessert. So, you know, as somebody who's not particularly religious, an Angel Delight pudding for me, especially if it's butterscotch, is better than a happy religious. Servant of God. This is going to be a new book idea. Exactly, Dave. Mark Goldbridge's two words that sound nice but actually aren't. I feel like it could be a whole show in itself each week. It should get its own section. Yeah, Red Wedding doesn't mean you're getting married in red. Good point. Final whistle goes. It's a shame it's the final whistle because I could carry on doing that all night. It was absolutely brilliant. You deserve a massive pat on your back if you've been watching this stream tonight. Nobody does it better. Nobody does it better. What a stream it's been. But in relation to the football, I think it's still 2-1 to Atletico Madrid. Um, it's still being played there. They've still got a minute to go. So we'll just stay with that one for a moment. Atletico Madrid on the attack. It's finished 3-2 to Barcelona. Uh, Atletico Madrid have just had a shot there. Um, but what what a couple of Champions League nights we've had. Really good. Really good. Mark, you give me advice the other day in regards to my partner not liking making love. Just want to say thank you for the advice. We both enjoyed it, says KP3. Oh. I can't remember what the advice was. Was it a rampant rabbit? I think that came from the chat. I can't remember what my advice was. Right, we're five minutes up here. Sweatshop, says SK and Dutch oven. Not my words, the words of SK. Sancho's playing for Dortmund, yeah. Oh, is it the bar? Header for Dortmund. 2-2. Two -two. Could have been. Brandt Mitt hits the bar. Well, it's worth staying for for that. Um, thanks, everybody, for watching tonight. You've been an absolute legend, as I said.
legends. We're only five subscribers away from 132,000 as well, so please do subscribe. Bottom right hand corner. Also, don't forget, uh, please pre order the book, scan the QR code. You can get it on Amazon if you're worldwide. You can also uh, pre order the Audible version, which is me on it, or you can get a signed version from WH Smith. Check those out. Please support it. You've been absolute legends tonight. What a show. We'll all be thinking of two words tonight that sound nice, but aren't. I just think of some innocent 60 year old. Work, walking in to Goldsmiths tomorrow, the jewellers, and saying to a young man, he was over 18 because he works in a shop, could you get me the pearl necklace, please? And on that bombshell, we will leave it there. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care. Speak to you soon. <clears throat>